chapter 22. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, that adventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes, more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, Tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled, because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men. But only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. 
And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honour? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. Hello, everybody. How are you today? It's great, a very, very great thing and very great honor to be with you and to share uh, from the Word of God, to learn from the Word of God. It's a really great thing. Um, as I said before, we have started uh, studying uh, some con uh, so-called contradictory Bible verses, and today we'll continue and look um, uh, some place in the Bible. Uh, so we'll continue and look... Uh, We'll continue learning and answering the questions. So, uh, spe uh, this today uh, we're gonna look at um, the account of Balaam, the prophet Balaam, the account of the prophet Balaam, and Balaam was one of the wicked prophets. He was a, one of the most wicked, false prophets. Of, uh, from the Gentiles, um, and he was uh, deceived by the, the Bible says, reward of divination, reward of divination. So we'll see today, and they claim that uh, the Bible is contradictory again, so we'll see uh, what is Balaam meant, and what his, his name stands for, and where he lived, uh, and um, what, he did, what did he do. Um, we'll see. So the contradictory uh, one is, uh, f uh, they say, found. The first one is God commanded Balaam not to go with those people and not to curse Israelites. God commanded Balaam not to go with the people of Balak and not to curse the Israelites in the book of Numbers 22, verse 12. The book of Numbers 22, verse 12. So God commanded Balaam not to go with the people of Balak and not to curse the Israelites. Okay. Second. And God said, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. Wow. If the men come to thee, rise up and go with them. Go with them. Numbers 22, 20. So, in Numbers 22, 12, between Numbers 22, 12 and Numbers 22, 20, in these eight verses, there is something. God said, okay, go with them. Go with the people, uh, the messengers of Balak. Okay. Third, and God's anger was kindled because he went. <laughs> Numbers 22, 22. God's anger was kindled. God became furious. God became angry. Why? Because Balaam went with the people of Balak. Okay. Now this is a, what they call as a contradiction. Did it? Did, what, what happened? Did God forget that ba uh, God told Balaam not to go? Why God changed his mind? Did God change his mind? And if he changes his mind, why 
he was angry at Balaam when Balaam went with those people. Okay, now let's let's go back again and have the the whole thing so that we can continue and uh, understand what God is teaching us here. Okay, Numbers twenty two twelve. God said to Balaam, "You don't." Go, don't go with these people and don't curse my people, Israel. Don't go with these people and don't curse my people, Israel. Okay. And number 22, 20, God said, okay, if the people come, uh, if the messengers of Balak are with you, Balak are with you, go with them. If they are with you, if they came to not yesterday night with you, just go with them. Go with them. So Balaam went with them. And God's anger was kindled. God was angry. Why? Balaam went with them. Because Balaam went with those people. So what is the problem? Well, the problem of the Bible that, uh, and the people who look at the Bible is because they take verses, you know. They take out of context. They don't regard anything which, is, which contains there, which God wants us, wanted us to teach us. And they don't pay attention for that. Just they pick up the verses which seems contradictory and they put it like, you know, in open field, and it, it looks contradictory. This is really, it, if you take these verses as they are, and don't go and read the Bible, they are contradictory. They are contradictory. But, but, we have to learn. But we have to see what what's going on. You know, we have to say what is going on. Why God first told him not to go, and second, told him to go, and third, when he went, God's skin was angry. Why? He was angry. What is the problem? So we have to consider, because here God put the Bible to teach us, to teach us some spiritual value, some guidelines through which we can live and practice in our lives. There are fundamental principles which we have to follow when we are Christians and when we read the Word of God and we lead our day-to-day -day life and we cannot go as we want as we like. No. We don't do that. We don't do that. God doesn't allow us to live like that. We have to follow the commandment of God and the word of God. So now, today, I'm going to see this from the Bible in uh, Numbers 22. Uh, we will look at these verses. Okay. First, um, okay, let me go to the Bible and read it for you. Um, I think uh, this one is a smaller. Um, if I can, uh, well, praise God. Um, Now let me let me start from number twenty to uh, verse uh, um, okay three uh, verse three and Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel so the king of Moab Balak and the people of Moab were afraid because Israel were coming toward them they were just near them. They were approaching. They destroyed the Amorites. They destroyed all other uh, powerful uh, people who refused 
them to pass through and they just destroyed them. Now they are coming, approaching the Moabites. So Balak was afraid and the people of Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us? as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Depor, was the king of the Moabites at that time. So they were, they were afraid. They were very much terrified. Now they have to do something. The Moabites, they have to do something. And they have to search someone who can help them stop the Israelites from coming to them or passing through their land. And he sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam. Balak, the king of Balak, uh, the king of Moab, Balak, sent messengers to Balaam the prophet, the prophet, the son of Beor, to Peter, Peter, which is by the river of the land of the children of the, his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. They are here. They are coming. The people who come out of Egypt, the mighty people, the powerful people, they are coming to me. Please come and help me. He sent messengers to Balaam, to the prophet. And the elders of Moab and the, the elders of Midian departed with the reward of divination in their hand. They had a big pack of money and they went to the prophet Balaam. The, the elders of what? Moab and Midian together. They went to, to the prophet Balaam so that he can help them with a large amount of money, which called the reward of divination. That means he was a divi uh, diviner. He was, he was a soothsayer. He was a soothsayer man. An evil spirit caller, the one who works with the evil spirit. So they went there with the reward of divination, they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. They told him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lord, here, stay here this night. He told them, okay, come on and stay here this night. Stay at my house this night. And I will bring you word again, and the Lord shall speak unto me. And the prince of Moab abode with Balaam. So they stayed with him, and he told them, I will go up where I sacrifice my sacrifice, and ask the Lord, whatever the Lord tells me, I will come back to you and tell you. And God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? What are these men with you? Who are these men with you? He told him, The men at your house, who are they? He asked Balaam. God came in the night and he asked him about the men, the messengers of Balak, the Moabites, and the uh, Midianites. So, God asked Balaam, and Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of the poor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, unto, unto, uh, unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. This is a, the, the order of what uh, the message of from Balak to Balaam. Come and curse Israelites. Come please and curse the Israelites so that I can overcome them. I can destroy them. I can dismantle them and be a conqueror over the people of Israel. Please come and curse these people. 
You know, Balaam, Balaam told everything to God. Everything to God. Now, what is uh, the answer of God? Let's continue. And God said to Balaam, Thou shall not go with them. God said, Okay, these people, don't go with them. Don't go with them. Thou shall not go with them. Thou shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Don't curse the Israelites. They are my people. They are the more most blessed people. These are the blessed people of mine. You cannot curse Balaam. You cannot do that. These people are not right people who come to you. The messengers of Balak are not right people. They are wrong. And they are my enemy. You cannot curse my people. And don't go with them. This is a commandment of God. God commanded Balak not to go with the people and not to curse the Israelites. Period. There is nothing more, nothing less. God commanded Balak not to go with these people and not to, guess, not to curse the Israelites because the Israelites are blessed people and they are the people of God. The people of God. So don't curse them. I don't want you to curse my people. I don't even, I don't want to be friend of these people. These people are my enemy. So don't be friend with them. Don't go with them. Don't do anything with them. That's what God commanded Balaam. Okay. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, okay, go to your country, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. God refused. Okay, God say, don't go. So he refused. Lord say, don't go with them. God of Israel say, don't go with them. He refused me to leave and go with you. Okay. And the princes of Moab, Moab rose and they went unto Balak and said unto, uh, uh, said, Balaam refuses to come with us. And Balak, Balak sent yet again princes. Again, princes more and more honorable than they. Okay. You see? Now, Balak changed his tactic. The first messenger was not successful. He cannot deceive Balaam. He, could, he couldn't deceive Balaam at that time. He couldn't, you know, bring Balaam to him and he was not able to curse the people of Israel. So they told him he refused to come with us. Now he sent more honorable Men, men of great statute, highly regarded men, <laughs> highly regarded men with a big bag of money. <laughs> they came with a, a bag of money, you know, they come, the money is there, we were always there. So they came to Balak, these honorable people, came to Balaam. Okay. Princes more and more honorable than they. It's not more honorable, but more and more honorable people. You know, Satan, he tries in one way, and he, he can, is, is not, if he is not successful, he devises something different and more sophisticated. You know, he doesn't lose hope until he gets someone. He gets a Christian out of the way of Christ. So now they came, these honorable people. Okay, they came. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of the poor, let, let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. Oh, that's a strong word. Let nothing stop you from coming to me. Let nothing, nothing. God, forget God. God told you not to go to me, no, not to come to me. Did he, tell, did he tell you? Forget it. Just come. <laughs> oh, come on. Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. Come, please come. Uh -huh. For I will promote thee unto a very great honor. I will honor you. There is promotion. There is a promotion, promotion after promotion. I prepared for you promotion after promotion. Great honor. And nothing, let nothing stop you. Forget this God. You don't have to listen to the word of God. He, you know, I, I just command you, just come. I will promote you. I will give you a special place in my people, in my country. Just come. Just come. And I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Whatever you say, I'll do it. Come. Wow, this is open door. This is open door. This is everything. Whatever, whatever, whatsoever you ask me, I'll do it. Come. Just forget God. Just forget God and come to me. Come to me. Whatsoever thou sayest unto me, I'll do it. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me these people. Come and curse me. There is one thing. Come and curse me. And let nothing, let nothing stop you from doing that. Because I have the great reward. I have great honor. I have great everything to you. I will make you a great person. Now this is, these are a beautiful word. Very enticing word. Two words to Balak. Uh, Balaam, from Balak, very enticing, very tempting words. You know, imagine, wow, I will do whatever you're asking me to do. Come on, come on. And come and curse one thing, come and curse these people. Okay, let's see what Balaam says. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if... Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God. Oh, powerful Christian. Is his answer? I cannot. Even if he gave me the silver, even if he gave me, he gives me the money, even, even if he gave me, he gives me whatever he has, I will not go with you and I cannot curse. Because I cannot trespass the words of my, the commandment of my God, the commandments of <laughs> the living God, the God of Israel. I cannot do it. Wow, full of silver and gold. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, and to do less or more. Whatever it is, I cannot do it. I can not do it. Oh, that's a nice stand. Okay. That's verse uh, 18. And now, verse 19. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, Balaam. In a, you know, in a, in just a no. First, they say, no, 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 no. I will not go. I will not go. I cannot trespass the word of God. He told them, 
And then he said, stay in my house. And then after a while, after a while they were in his house, he changed his mind. When he thought about some money, when he thought about the glory, when he thought about the promotion, when he thought about every wonderful things that Balaam, uh, Balak can do for him, he changed his mind. His faith became weak. It became weak and weaker and weaker. As he thought, you know, that's what we always think. When we think, things change, you know. When we think about it, if you think about something, is something bad, it just transforms you. It takes you over. So this Balaam, after a while, when he was in with these people, and the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Sippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company look up all that are round about us, as the ox looketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Sippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beer to Pether, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt, behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me, peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land, for I want that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, peradventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak said yet again princes, more, and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam, and said to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee unto a very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God, to do less or more. Now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up, and go with them, but yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass, to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place, where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day was I ever one to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times, and lest she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was calm, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not honestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee, have I now any power at all to say anything the word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak? And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kerjath Huseph. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow, that Balak took Balaam, and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people, 